Game Dev Journey. Hey everyone, it's Rob here from Game Dev Journey. Welcome to the first video in my series creating a top-down tank battle game in Godot. I previously made a game like this in Construct 3 and I'm eager to learn how to do it in Godot. So please join me, like the video if you find it helpful and consider subscribing if you want to support me. So I've got a new project open in Godot and first we're going to start just by setting up a few of the things we need to do. If you click on uh, the icon down here and you go to import you can turn off the filter this is just so that we maintain that um, clear pixels when our images are brought in and to save time click on preset and set as default for texture next we can bring our assets in uh, I've provided these in the link in the description below, but I'm just going to drag my folder and drop it in over here. And here my assets folder appears. Now let's start by creating the tank scene. So let's have a kinematic body to control the tank. So we'll add a kinematic body 2d object right there and we'll rename this to tank because the player will have a tank and the enemies will have a tank so the idea is we create one scene for tanks and as a general tank and then we specialize the player tank versus the enemy tank so we'll need a sprite for the body We'll need a collision shape for the tank itself. We'll need a sprite for the turret. And we need to know where to fire the bullet from the turret. So we'll add a position shape 2D for the turret and we can call this muzzle position and finally we can add a timer for the gun so that we can control how often the player can shoot uh, we'll give the gun a cooldown so that you can't just spam the fire button um, and eliminate everything on the screen without having to uh, pause before firing right let's add a script to the tank to control the general way a tank functions um, let's just save the scene we'll put it in its own folder called tanks and the scene can be tank now we can create a script i'm just going to make it empty and there we go so we'll set up a few signals first of all we need to know if the health of the tank has changed and we need to know if the tank is dead so we can signal to show that those things have happened then we will export a packed scene and that will be for the bullet so the bullet will be its own scene and we'll we'll export it as a fully packed scene then we will also export a variable for the speed at which the tank can move uh, a variable for the speed at which the tank can rotate a variable for the cooldown of the gun call it gun cooldown and a variable for health uh, let's, uh, let's health right then let's set up the velocity vector, uh, vector two. and let's see if the gun is able to shoot or not in other words is it on cooldown or not 
And also, is the tank alive or dead? And we can have our ready, ready function. we can just um, set the wait time of the gun timer so let's go dollar gun timer dot wait time and we can set that to our cooldown variable whatever we decide will be then we need a function to control the motion of our tank so this is basically our, our movement keys for the tank. But this will pass off to the specific um, tank that is in the game. So if it's the player tank that needs to be controlled, we'll pass this method off to the player tank script to deal with. Um, we can also have our game loop here, our physics process. And what we'll basically say is, if you're not alive, then we will just return or do nothing. Otherwise, you can move around. So we can, we can move our tank around with our control function and our built-in move and slide that is part of the kinematic body okay and we'll save this so this is basically how a tank works now we can specialize this into a player tank and an enemy tank so let's create a player tank scene and we'll do it by inheriting this tank scene so we'll click on scene new inherited scene and we'll inherit the tank scene Okay, there we go. So now we're here in a new scene. We'll, this isn't just a plain tank anymore. This is the actual player's tank. We can save it as the player scene in tanks. And now we can create uh, a, we'll give this, this tank a texture. So if we go to our assets, here is the um, tile map okay of tanks so let's put that in as let's go to the body of the tank let's drag that as the texture and now we have all the tanks in the map but we don't want all of them so let's select let's enable region settings then if you go down here at the bottom you can click on texture region and we can scroll in and let's give ourselves a little room there there's a tank that looks pretty good let's choose the snap mode of pixel snap and let's go in and grab this it looks like we got it okay and you'll see this tank has no turret this tank has a turret but if we choose this one then we won't be able to rotate the turret independently so what we're going to do is go to the turret and give it its own texture so we'll turn region setting enabled on, go to texture region, still on pixel snap. Turrets look like they're up top here. Um, this looks like a nice one here, so let's try and grab it. Make sure we got everything. Scroll that in a bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, our issue now, of course, is that the turret doesn't look like it's in the right place. So we want to move it along the x-axis to the right a little bit. So let's offset it on the x um, by probably around 20 or so. Yeah, that looks better. So now you can see it's over there. And it looks more like a real tank. Okay, so now we need to know where the bullets are going to fire from, which is why we've got a marker for the muzzle, for the position of the muzzle. And at the moment, the bullets are going to fire from there. We don't want that. We want the bullets to fire from the end. So let's zoom in a little and drag our muzzle marker over there. 
this further up there. Okay, what is that now? Uh, let's check what that position is. We're sitting at around 50. Okay, move it over a little bit more. Maybe not. Yeah, okay, 50. So the bullets are going to fire from there. Okay, that excellent. Let's add a collision shape to our tank. So we're going to go to our collision shape. We're going to select a new rectangle shape. And we're just going to make it fit. So that looks perfect. And we will drag it out. Let's go there. Perfect. That's our collision shape set. And now what we can do is add a script for this player. Now you'll see that the player already has the tank script attached to it. So I'm just going to disconnect it and I'm going to attach a new script and we want it to inherit the tank script. So we'll just go and select that under inherits. Now we can click create <clears throat> and there we go. It extends the tank. So it's got everything that's in the tank script and we are now going to add the things that make it specialized. If you go and look in the tank script, the tank script has no information for how to control the tank. It just passes this method on. So we need to actually add that method to our player. You'll notice that if we click on our player, we have all the variables available. They come from the tank script. So we could set the speed to 200, the rotation speed to 1, the cooldown to 0.5, and a hundred health okay but this tank can do nothing because it has no information as to how to move so let's add in that control function so we're going to say function control uh, it receives delta okay and we're going to now tell it what to do well the turret should look look at the mouse position so we're going to get the global mouse position the turret will always look at the mouse cursor now so that takes care of the turret we can now say the rotation direction so rot rotation direction is zero uh, and we can say if or let's just put a space here to make this clear if our input dot is action pressed and we want um, right you are right then we want to say rotation direction plus equals one okay and then if input dot is action pressed we want ui left then we'll say rotation direction minus equals one okay so the turret will rotate left to right and now we can actually rotate it so we can say rotation plus equals rotation uh, speed equals speed uh, times the rotation direction uh, times delta and then it will actually rotate so that's for rotating the body of the tank for turning the tank essentially now let's make the tank go forward and backwards so let's set up a velocity vector so let's say velocity equals a vector 2 and now let's go and say um, let's set up our if input dot is action is action is action underscore I got a capital I yeah. if input dot is action pressed up then we will say velocity will 
will now equal our vector two time speed and this will be zero and we'll say dot rotate it we'll rotate it according to the rotation so our tank is going to swivel around and if input is action rest now we want down then we will set our velocity will equal vector 2 and we'll do it again by negative speed and this is going backwards so it'll be uh, negative speed divided by 2 comma 0 and we'll say dot rotated rotation Okay, and that should do it. Um, got a spelling error here, Vec vector two. Vec vector two. Okay, let's save this. Just to explain this code here, this is the code to make the tank move forwards and backwards so if you're pressing the up button your velocity is forward at speed amount and in the direction that you're facing if you're pressing down you'll be moving backwards so your velocity is negative speed but you move backwards half as fast as you move forwards. So that's why we divide by two. You move backwards at negative speed divided by two in the direction that you want to go. And let's test our scene. So if we run the scene, we have a tank that we should be able to control. And there we go. So we can swivel around our turret. We can turn our tank. We can move and we can rotate our tank body and go forward. We can go backwards and we can rotate left and right.